horizontal to the horizontal to the time axis. We have two axes, y axis and the x axis. And in the x axis, we have time, and on the y axis, we have distance in meters. So when the object is at rest means when the object is not traveling any distance, what will happen? The graph is a straight line parallel to the Okay now, so what we have read is in our previous lecture we learned that what is the distance time graph. In the distance time graph, we need the three cases. First one is object at rest, then object moving with the constant speed, and then object moving with the variable speed. And today the topic under consideration is the speed time graph. Speed time. 
So in speed time graph, again we have three cases. First one is when the object moving with the constant speed. Second is the object moving with uniformly changed speed. And the third case is when the distance traveled by a moving object. This is the second case. First case is the object moving with constant speed. Object moving with constant speed means the speed of the object is not changing. On x-axis, we have time in seconds, whereas on y-axis, we have speed in meter per second. This is the zero line. Okay, now I will make some intervals. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. This is the time axis. And here we have the speed. 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. Means what will happen when the object is moving with the constant speed? For example, somewhere back here, the speed is not changing. The speed is constant. Meaning, time is moving. Time is continuously passing. Okay? But the speed remains unchanged. Speed is not changed. At some moment, but there, like 5 feet per second, you can say, the speed is constant. It is not changing. So, therefore, we have a straight line parallel to the time axis because time is moving. Time is moving 5, 10, 20, 20, 24, 25. But the speed of the object on y axis cap is not changing is zero. So, therefore, we have a straight line. And then the second is object moving with uniformly change speed. Uniformly change means it is changing in the equal intervals. For example, on the first five second, the car, car speed is 2 meter per second. And then again in the next five seconds, the speed of the car is again 2 meter per second. So here I have plotted the points. Again, then after 10 seconds, in the next five seconds, the speed of the car is again 2 meter per second. So I have plot a point here. When we draw both of these points, we will observe that we have a straight line, we have a slope. And this slope gives us the acceleration. Okay, after that, the third case, that is the distance traveled by a moving object. The third case is the distance traveled by a moving object. Distance traveled by a moving by a moving object. Okay, so what will happen is in this case we have to find out the distance. Now, in this case, we do not have a particular graph or a particular straight line or a horizontal line, any line. This may be any graph. Like suppose, in x-axis we have time in second, whereas in the y-axis we have speed in meter per second. This is the zero line. Again, I mark some intervals, it is 5, 10, 15, 20, and 25. 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. So let's suppose the cards start moving from the initial value 0, continuously moving, 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 and at some level over here, 9, at 9, its speed remains 
constant mean it is moving with the constant speed for 20 seconds that's it so 20 mean here is on the first five seconds it is changing its speed whereas in the next 15 seconds its speed is constant that is 9 meter per second and then what will happen in the next five seconds or in the last five seconds the speed is 30 meters per so we have a graph like this now how to find the distance from this graph this area area under the graph gives us what the distance of the moving object. This equals to the distance of the moving object. Okay, so how we can calculate this area? We can calculate this area using the geometrical or the mathematical formulas. For example, if the graph is like a square, so we will use the formula of area of a square. If the graph is in the shape like this, then we have time, then we have speeding meter per second. Then we will use the formula of area of a triangle. And this area gives us the distance traveled by a moving object. So these are the three cases of the speed time graph. Here the topic 2.5 is completed. In the next lecture, we will see what are the equations of motion. So in speed time graph, we have three examples. So example 2.7, 2.8 and 2.9. In 2.7, what we have to do is we have to find out the slope of the object in the second case. That is the object moving with uniformly changed speed. So we will use the formula of acceleration because we know that the slope gives us the acceleration. So what we will do is we will find out the slope. And for finding the slope, means we are finding the acceleration and the formula of acceleration is change in velocity divided by the time taken or the time interval. So in example 2.27, the graph 2.23, we have two points A and B. So we, the change in velocity means the change in speed here is 2 meter per second and the time interval is five seconds between point A and between point B. So when we divide two by five, we get the answer 0 0.4 meter per second square. Why meter per second square? Because we are finding the acceleration of the body. And then same case, uh, when of example 2.8, what is happening here is, the car's distance is decreasing with respect to time. So we will mark two points C and D on the graph. Again, we have to find the slope, means we have to find out the acceleration and formula of acceleration is change in velocity divided by the time taken. So here again, we are considering two points C and D and the time during C and D is five seconds and the change in speed is two meter per second. We have negative sign, why? Because the speed is decreasing with respect to time. So when we divide two by five, negative two by five, we have negative 0 0.4 meter per second square. As you know that acceleration is Vf minus Vi. So we have to take the final velocity first. And in the figure 2.24, the final velocity is Two meter per second. Final speed is two meter per second, whereas the initial speed is the C point four meter per second. Now, okay, next we have the example two point nine. 
in 2.9 you have to find out the four things first one is the acceleration during the first 10 seconds means on the first 10 seconds we will note that what is happening is the speed is changing so the formula of acceleration by the time taken so final velocity is 16 and the initial velocity is zero because from zero point the car starts moving and the time is given 10 seconds. So when we divide 16 by 10, 1.6 meter per second. And the second is acceleration during the last two seconds. In the last two seconds, we from 16 meter per second, the car speed is decreasing and after two seconds, it will come back to zero position. So here, Vf is zero and Vi is 16. So negative 16 divided by two is eight meter per second square. Then the part C, which is the total distance traveled. This is the graph of the third case, that is distance traveled by a moving object. And we know we will find out the total distance by using the mathematical or the geometrical formula of trapezium that is 1 over 2 sum of parallel side multiplied by the height. So height in this case is 16 meter per second whereas the parallel sides are time axis and the horizontal line parallel to the time axis. In time axis we have total 30 seconds whereas the parallel line is somewhat like 18 seconds. So 18 plus 30 that is 48. And when we multiply this by 16 and after that divide by 2, we get the answer 384 meters. And then the last step is average speed. This is the total distance divided by the time. So we have total distance. This is 384 and the time is 30 seconds. So when we divide both of these, we have 12.8 meter per second. So this is your first marking of the facts. So, you know, Fatima, why we have not taken the last two lectures? Okay, so in our next lecture, we will discuss the equations of motion. That is the topic number 2.6. And in your next lecture, I will give you again an uh, homework assignment of chapter number 2. Is there any confusion in your homework assignment number 1? In your homework assignment, I have given you eight questions. All the solved numericals are also given to you. The first question is the defined physics, and then second one is the all the branches of physics. There is no need of any stories in the short question. 
you have to write just point to point answer. Okay, then on question number three, you have the difference between base and derived quantities. The difference is always always given in the form of tables. For example, you can. The heading is difference between base and derived quantities. What we have to make is a table like this with separation. L we have written base quantities and L derived quantities. Then the first heading is the definition. Second one is the example. You have to give two to three examples in base and derived unit difference. And then again in the derived unit, first of all you have to write up the definition first and then you have to write up the Example at least two to three in the case of base and derived quantities or in the derived units. And then, if there is any unit, you must have to mention this unit. If there is any formula, then give the heading of formula. Then you have to give the heading of formula and write it down means you have to cover at least two to three steps for both of the quantities. In this question, you have only two uh, quantities, only the two difference. But first one is the definition and then you have to write out the example. After that, the question number four, draw and learn the table 1.1 and 1.2 on page six from here book. Okay, so you have to draw the table number 1.1 that is for base quantities and the 1.2 that is for the derived quantities. After that, the question number five, what is mean by vernier constant? What is vernier constant? Vernier constant is the least count of vernier caliper. You have to write out the definition of least count of vernier caliper and then the formula of least count of vernier caliper and then you have to find out its value that is 0 0.01 centimeter and 0 0.1 millimeter. 